Hey guys, um, in this this video, I wanted to show you that um, the problems we just did using the empirical rule, you can use a TI-84 calculator. Um, and normally, probably a teacher wouldn't show you this, but uh, you know we are remote learning, and and they'd like you to learn the empirical rule and memorize it. But the truth is, any exam we take will have our calculators anyway. And I'm going to show you how you can answer these questions with the TI-84 calculator. Now, there might be something you have to write down, calculator steps, but I'll tell you when that happens. Okay, so going back to the same problems we just looked at. All right, I don't know if we'll do all of them or not, but let's just take a look at a couple of them. I'll show you how it works. All right, so if you're working with a TI-84 calculator, and I do recommend that, even in Delta Math, there's a calculator app in there, but honestly, this is so much easier to use. You know, I think... I'm going to have trouble with my, can I move my picture out of the way? Yeah, let me move me over there. Okay, so, um, all right, so where you want to go to work with these problems, you're going to gonna use second, write that down, distribution. That's the VARS button right here. Okay, now there's two that look a lot alike right here. There's normal PDF and normal CDF. You're always going to be using normal CDF, so it's always number two. Okay, we're picking that one. All right, now here's some language here that I need to talk about. I don't think that mu is very confusing. We know what the standard deviation is. I mean, not standard deviation, but what the mean is. It's right here. We know what sigma is. It's right here. But this upper and lower bound stuff um, I, I should talk about, okay? So um, lower bound is always left on the curve, the number line. Okay, as reading left or right. It's always left. Upper bound is always right. You cannot reverse that or it'll give you an error. Notice right here. Now, I've got mine in the default setting. It's saying negative 1E99. E Remember, that's that scientific notation this calculator uses. Um, negative 1 times 10 to the 99 power. So that's essentially negative infinity. So write this down. I'm going to paste it right here for you. Oh, come on. What just happened? About the calculator language. All right, so write this down. Negative infinity is negative 1 E99. Positive infinity is 1 E99. And that's what you can use, and that's what was the default in there, so I would use it. Um, let me show you what they're talking about. Okay, so technically this curve goes infinitely in both directions, right? From positive, I mean, from mu being zero, it will go to positive infinity and negative infinity that way. Now, of course, the area gets really, really small out here past three standard deviations, but it will still work with using infinity. You could probably use like negative 10 and positive 10 and probably get really, really, really close to the same numbers, but um, just so you'll know, that's the notation and that's what they're using, okay? All right, so let's go back to the problem. And we got our thing pulled up here, and this one says players weigh between 178 and 194. So your lower bound is your 178, your upper bound is 194, um, mu is 178, and sigma is 8. And we're going to paste it and hit enter. And there's that 47.7% right there. So it gives this gives you areas under the curve. Okay. And let's just do one more so this video doesn't get too long here. Let me pick a good one here. Let's see. Um, at most. That's a good one because this isn't in between two numbers that you know of, right? This is a good one to do. So let's try this one. Um, so second, back to distribution. Number two. All right, now, let's see. We got the same um, mean and standard deviation, so I don't need to change that, but I gotta deal with my upper and lower bounds and what are they saying? So when we earlier we said um, at most 170 means from the left would be negative infinity up to uh, 170. So this is a, a spot where you would need to do the negative one second E, Nine nine. That's your negative infinity, and now your upper bound is going to be one seventy. 
and that should give us the number we were looking for. Now, my experience in the past watching people do this and get them messed up is they get confused with positive infinities and negative infinities. And you're going to have to keep it in your mind. You're looking at a number line, and your negative infinity is always on the left. Positive infinity is always on the right. So if you're taking everything to the right side of the curve, you're going to be dealing with a positive infinity. And if you're taking stuff to the left, a negative infinity. So let's hit enter here and see what happens. And there's that point. 159 that we got earlier. So as you can see, it's a powerful tool. This comes up in the next lesson anyway, so I don't mind showing you this. Use this and um, hope it helps. Those of you smart enough to watch this video. All right, I'll see you in the next one.